Praise the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. We'll rejoice and be glad in it. Lift your hand in thanksgiving before God from the bottom of your heart. Tell him you love him. You celebrate his goodness. You celebrate his faithfulness in your life. Bless the Lord with all of your strength. Come on. Jesus, we magnify you today. We bless you, Lord. We magnify you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, bless. Oh, bless. Oh, bless. Oh, bless. In Jesus' name. Father in heaven, we give you glory. We give you praise. We thank you. Our gathering is unto you. Unto you shall the gathering of the people be. Bless us in your word. Minister to us in your word. Touch us by your word. Lift us by your word. Deliver by your word. Heal by your word. Father, let the entrance of your word bring life to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name. Shout a powerful amen. Come to this morning service. Reach out and welcome somebody near you. Tell them they look nice and lovely. And you may have a seat. Praise the Lord. 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 Welcome to live class. Welcome to another time in the presence of the Lord. In this morning's live class, we start a new sesh, a new series called Wisdom for Winning in Life. Wisdom for winning in life. Wisdom for winning in life. If you have your Bibles, please turn to the book of Job, chapter 28, verse 12 to 21. Job, chapter 28, verses 12 to 21. While you're turning, I'll start reading. But why, where can wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? Man does not know its value. Nor is it found in the land of the living. The deep says, it's not in me. And the sea says, it's not with me. It cannot be purchased for gold. Nor can silver be weighed for its price. It cannot be valued in the gold of Ophir, in precious onyx or sapphire. Neither can gold or nor crystal Neither can neither gold nor crystal can equal it, nor can it be exchanged for jewelry or fine gold. No mention shall be made of coral or quartz. For the prize of wisdom is above rubies. The topaz of Ethiopia cannot equal it, nor can it be valued in pure gold. From where then does wisdom come? And where is the place of understanding? It is hidden from the eyes of all living and concealed from the birds of the air. May God bless his word. I said, may God bless his word. It's very important for you to really connect with this series, this teaching. Because when you look at the world in which we live today, we need wisdom. Wisdom to win, wisdom to overcome, wisdom to make progress, wisdom to achieve, wisdom to be blessed. Wisdom is a quality or state of being. The state of being wise. It is the demonstration of the knowledge of what is right, what is true, combined with good judgment and good action. So wisdom is a demonstration of knowledge of what is right because you can buy knowledge you can study for knowledge, but you cannot study for wisdom. In fact, you can accelerate degree programs, but you cannot accelerate wise action. It is, it is the demonstration of what is true, the demonstration of what, what is good judgment. Wisdom is expressing discernment. A wise man will demonstrate clear thinking, discernment discrimination and action on what he does and circumspection 
good judgment to be circumspect means to be wise in the way you look at matters and how you act or react sometimes wisdom will make you not to answer immediately but to say can i come back to you on this one and during the time of your meditation you just saw clearly beyond emotion somebody say amen wisdom will mean showing judiciousness because sometimes for example if two people were to come to you and one tells you xyz did this to me this is how they did it and this is the word they spoke in fact your mind immediately casts aspersions and takes inside of judgment until you hear the other side by the time you hear the other side you hold your head and say my god this world is deep i wanted to act on the first thing i heard and i would have been foolish if i acted wisdom will mean showing judiciousness practicality shrewdness solidity and a deep understanding of a matter at hand wisdom is so necessary wisdom is what will make you to turn your blessing to prosperity wisdom is what will make you to turn knowledge to good action the new testament uses it in different contexts combining it with love and righteousness so when wisdom comes into a place where there is love and there is righteousness then the product is awesome amen the new testament talks of moral wisdom and and wisdom that goes with grace as a, 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 an aspect of wisdom from the greek word sophia means to be full of intelligence and broad knowledge in diverse matters sophia is different from the wisdom we're teaching today you can buy sophia i know you know some friends whose names are sophia actually their name means either knowledge of wisdom but you see you can buy this kind of wisdom it is the one you get from books it is the one you get from learning it's the one you get from reading and when you get halfway that's why they call you in american universities so for more which means half knowledge not full knowledge because you've only done two years out of four year university so you are so for more half knowledge so you can buy this one you can buy intelligence that's why you see people with master's degree phd acting foolish because they bought knowledge but knowledge is not wise action is somebody hearing me i said are you hearing me and sometimes we've arrogated people with great knowledge to mean they can do anything i've seen guys and i'm going to try with my illustration not to let you know who i'm talking about who are amazingly knowledgeable to the point of getting global awards global award for their intelligence and literary mind they criticize government but they can't manage their marriage they are very wise when it comes to book they can't manage four people in a home but they can tell every government and people listen to them because they are knowledgeable but they are not wiseable so bible wisdom is different from cunningness there are some people who are cunning but they are not wise which was what happened what 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 the serpent expressed when he deceived eve the snake is cunning it has that's why the bible says be wise as serpents because in other words you need to acquire some ways the serpent will operate for example can you believe a serpent can sometimes tell if an approaching person half a mile or a mile away is a friend or an enemy so sometimes they might not even lift their head from where they are because they can discern that this person coming is a friend or not an enemy at all i mean i don't know if there are many friends of snakes wisdom is god give is god given ability to pursue true nature of a matter and to implement the will of god in that matter so if god is telling you uh go and work in australia wisdom is for you to really try to know the mind of god 
God, why are you uprooting my family to go and live in Australia? The, the first thing many people do is to go and bring out the map of Australia and begin to study all the seashore. Oh my God, we'll be having wonderful times by the seashore instead of them asking, where is the wisdom in Mui uprooting everybody, going to live somewhere else? What do you want me to learn? What do you want me to become? So many truly travel because God said, but they never become because they did not seek his mind for the remaining chapter. You will not miss God. Somebody hear me this morning? Uh, somebody said, wisdom is what is true and right combined with good judgment. In other words, it's not enough to have wisdom. You need to have it in a way that it is true and you combine it with good judgment. For example, it can be true that somebody stole but, uh, but uh, it is not good judgment for you to embarrass them in front of everyone. You might achieve the fact that you exposed the thief, but uh, you did not help that person. I read the story of a young man who many years after he had become a great person, he met his teacher who saved him from an embarrassment. The teacher somebody had stolen from the class and they decided that the teacher was to check everybody's pocket as the teacher was searching every pocket he got to the guy in whose pocket the thing was he didn't announce that he had found it many years later that guy became some awesome person and when he met the teacher and he said sir i thank you for not embarrassing me on that day because when you found it in my pocket you acted like you didn't see it and the teacher later let him know that if he had announced, he knew he would have ruined him. In that context, he didn't want to. He acted as if nobody did it so that it could just move on. He, he just brought it out. They didn't know from whose pocket he brought it. They didn't know. Of course, there are sometimes you need to expose a thief. But there are times when in your attempt to shame a person, you destroy their future. When I was a little kid, there are, <laughs> there are kids, for example, who probably through insecurity or some spiritual attack, maybe fighting bedwetting. Parents will hang your bed sheet outside so that your neighbors will know you are bedwetting. It ruins such kids instead of healing them. It embarrasses them and makes them silent instead of them becoming gifted. Wisdom. The Hebrew word for wisdom is hokma. It refers to some kind of skill and ability. So you see, it's a skill. You acquire skill. You don't just learn skill. You have abilities. You don't just learn abilities. So wisdom is a demonstration of a God-given skill. May it come on you. It's a demonstration of God-given ability. In Hebrews, in Exodus 28 verse 3 says so, you shall speak to all who are gifted artisans, whom I have filled with the spirit of Hokma, ability, skill, that they may make Aaron's garments to, to consecrate him, that he may minister to me as a priest. God showed up. He gave them the skill in the night season on how to make this dress. Remember, they were ex slaves They had just come out. Uh, they wore uniform. <laughs> uh, they wore the same thing. But now God was teaching them to be his people and to dress a certain way. And for the priest garment, if you've ever read the book of Levi uh, Ex Leviticus, you know that it's very, very intricate. Several colors, a uh, white one on the top, a breeches at the bottom. Uh, I don't want to go through all of it. And then something on his chest with 12 stones, each stone representing the children of Israel. And some people began to use it to, to hear the Lord, the Urim and Thummim. But you see, for them to even create this designer dress, which they had never seen before, God had to give them the skill. I pray that the skill that will open doors for you will be given to you. Grace upon grace. Blessing upon blessing. And also you will not abuse it. You will bless your generation by it. 
you touch lives with it in the mighty name of Jesus. The Webster Dictionary defines wisdom <clears throat> as the ability to make right use of knowledge. Right use of knowledge. So you have people who have the knowledge, but they don't make the right use of it. What is wisdom? Wisdom is the most principal of all that will make a person a winner in life. You want to win in life? It is wisdom. You, mar you manage homes with wisdom. You manage relationships with wisdom. Some people just don't have the gift of gathering people, blessing people, maturing people. They only know just how to judge, cut down, destroy. They don't know how to build people. It takes wisdom. It takes wisdom to see gifted people to push their gift out. It takes wisdom to build bridges. It takes wisdom to build a business. You can have skills and people want what you sell. But it will take wisdom to also when they pay for you to multiply the money. Not everybody can run business. Some people can attract money, but they don't know how to keep it. And they don't know how to multiply it. It takes a certain skill. Amen? I said amen. amen. So wisdom is the principal thing. With all your getting, get wisdom. The scripture prescribes it and demands that we get it, understand it, esteem it, embrace it. If you read Proverbs chapter 8, you find that it is describing wisdom, even though the wisdom it is describing there is not, a human, it's not uh, just a skill. It is Jesus himself, the embodiment of the wisdom of God. The embodiment of the wisdom of God. Listen, you need wisdom. You need wisdom to be able to manage people, relationships, to be able to go far in life. You need wisdom to carry, for example, sometimes life will throw you in a place where you have all kinds of people working either for you or around you. Some people uh, will come and work with you or for you in your business. They don't accept what you told them. You said A, B, C, D, do it. And then they come and they say, sir, I know you said A, B, C, D, but uh, could we do D differently? And this is the reason why I'm saying it. A bad employer will sack them. A good employer will keep them. You want to know why? Don't hire people who just do what you say. Also hire thinkers. Because some people don't think. They just follow what you told them. About turn. Right turn. Left turn. But thinkers, they say, I want to turn. But sir, have you considered that we shouldn't just be turning? If we do this and this, this business would be this way. Then you can say, oh yeah, that's true. You know, I was meeting with some people during the week who are marketers of our real estate. We just had a girl who is a digital marketer. And uh, she brought points that meant we have to cancel all the marketing strategy we've done for some things. And I said, why did you say that? She said, if we do it this way, this way, this way, this will be the result. That was wisdom. Cancel all that we've wasted, we spent money on. Let's follow our wisdom. Thinkers. Because thinkers are also operating based on wise action. Not just following what you said. Of course, you can also tell a rebellious person, they would question what you brought, but they have no alternative. That one is a rebellious person. Don't follow him. Praise God. Is somebody getting something this morning? So Bible wisdom is not common sense, but scripture sense. Matthew 7, 24, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house where? On the rock. <laughs> Every, it's amazing. Even though Jesus said this 2,000 years ago, People are still not disobeying this scripture. This scripture, people are till tomorrow. Just behind KIC is in the city of Lagos, Nigeria, our headquarters, KIC is in Maryland, Lagos. You have buildings that are already lean on me. You know, you leave your pot here, your pot is, is doing a twist. 
You know, they used to dance twist in the 70s. It's twisting down. They were told, if you are going to build, you can't just dig and put a foundation. You have to put piles that can carry the building. Ah, they said pile is expensive. So KICC Church is sitting on 70 piles. That is 30% of the total cost of the building. Even at the end of the 70 piles, and we wanted to build, structural engineer said, you can't put 5,000 seats like you planned before. You have to cut it to 3,000. Why? They said, even with the pile, by the weight, you can't have 5,000 people sitting here every Sunday. We said, it's only Sundays. They said, no, even that they are sitting over time, they will begin to sink the building. Ah. So we can only put 3,000. 70 piles. These piles are like pillars. Jesus said, some people will build on sand and think that it will just stand. But it does not stand. Wise action. Wise action. The reason for multiple divorce in society today is because a great number of marriages, relationships out there were not built on wise action. They were built on what magazines, Cosmopolitan magazine, Vogue magazine, Esquire magazine, and all other ones that, that celebrate physical look, what they promote is what many marriages are built on, not wise action. Not wise action. So you can just tell sometimes where a home, a relationship, a family are going. Somebody was telling me during the week about a young lady. She wants to have a baby. In America, she goes to stay with her in-laws. Her mother-in-law also traveled to be there. So her uncle-in-law is there. Her mother-in-law is there. These people are in, her, in their 70s. Uh, she will come down, cook her own food alone, and go upstairs to her room and sit. Uh, she doesn't want to be stressed. Jesus, man. As if it is, she's the pot that cooks it. She's the stove that cooks it. She's the cooker that cooks it. She knows how to prepare her own. But these old people are stressing her. I, I see you saying her. But you see, but somebody saw her. He didn't ask questions. And he did not look down the road and see if this, you know, a lot of marriages, you can just tell they are Uber. They are not heavy goods very good. They are not going far. I, guess, I must just confess to you, it's one of the reasons I just passed pastoral counseling, premarital counseling to Pastor Deeper. You'll be doing it. Because when some people sit in front of you, you just know this one. This is Uber. I reject it for you. I reject it for your children. Your marriage will go far. Marriage of your children will go far. In Jesus' name. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I remember a friend of mine, Pastor MC knows her. Daughter comes, hey, I want to marry the guy. The mother objected. The girl, when the mother was going to agree, I said, the marriage will last five years. I said, I'm not cursing. I'm just telling you what I know, both spiritually and studying Uber and heavy goods, very goods. After five years, in fact, they are not together anymore anyway. Uh, their first daughter is about 12 or 13. They've been separated for like four years. Take four from 13. Remaining what? Nine. Even the nine years, there were about five years of endurance. Remove five from nine. What remains? Four. Uber. You know, because a lot of people sometimes just do not apply wisdom and realize that anything that I'm going to do that's going to take years, I need to apply wisdom to what I am doing. Apply wisdom. Don't ever just agree to your daughter, your son, getting married to a person because you want, to get, you want to get off their case. You have to apply wisdom. It is God's way of doing things. Wisdom. Is, it is making use of the word of God to produce profit in every given area of life. Daniel and his friend exercised, and his friends exercised it even at a tender age of 16. They were so wise. The Bible says, Daniel chapter 1, verse 20, and in all matters of wisdom 
and understanding about which the king examined them, he found them to be 10 times better than all the magicians and astrologers who were in all his realm. He didn't say in all mathematics. He didn't say in all English literature, in astronomy and physics. He says in matters of wisdom, because you can acquire those ones, but you can, you, 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 wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom, wisdom is wise action. Praise the Lord. There is earthly wisdom, there's sensual, there's devilish wisdom, but the one from God produces positive result. Job describes the wisdom from God. He said it is priceless beyond quality of gold or silver. Many do not sit down, calculate, take the time, act in wisdom. In fact, sometimes I have met with people whom I will say, why are you doing what you want to do? They say, um, my friends are doing it. So they act on what their friends are doing and they miss God. Wisdom is priceless beyond quality of gold or, 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 or silver. It cannot be mined from under the sea, nor can it be equaled to crystal. It is more precious than onyx and sapphire. It is more precious than the topaz of Ethiopia. Wisdom is the principal thing with all you're getting, get wisdom. So when you get wisdom, you operate in the class of your father God. The Bible says in Job 28 from verse nine, he puts his hand on the flint. He overturns the mountains at the post. He cuts out channels in the rocks and his eye sees every precious thing. He dams up the streams from trickling. What is hidden, he, he brings forth to light. But where can wisdom be found? Where is the place of understanding? Man does not know its value, nor it, is it found in the land of the living. The deep say, it's not in me. The sea says, it's not with me. It cannot be purchased for gold, nor can silver be weighed for its price. It cannot be valued in the gold of Ophir, in the precious onyx or sapphire. So the Bible goes on to describe how Wisdom is so priceless. Bible wisdom is the, is the quality of being. It's not just knowledge. It is the capacity to use knowledge properly. Knowledge of the best ends and best means. That is what wisdom is. When a man is wise, he demonstrates attitudes that show astuteness. Circumspection. What is circumspection? Circumspection is looking inwardly, carefully, prayerfully before you act, before you take a step. There are times you want to answer a person. Let me give you an example. I don't know if this illustration is even the best. It's not the best illustration, but I'll use it. There's somebody who has cast aspersion at me for 30 years. For the first time, I'm about to now instruct a solicitor to write him. I say, you've done it for 30 years and I have never responded. If you don't stop now that I've endured you for 30 years, I am going to react. Look how long I have endured him. 30 years. He's done everything possible in this world for me to respond. But I have never responded. Ah. Some people would have the first day, fire for fire, attack for attack, for 30 years, since 2000 and, no, 1993. That's a long time. But you see, my mother used to say, soup does not move in the stomach of an elder. It doesn't move because he is wiser than the person who is casting the expression? Sometimes when people cast the expression, it's because you are better than them, you are wiser than them, you are more blessed than them, you are more lifted than them, and they can't handle your success. They can't handle your blessing 
So they have to be like the parrot that makes noise and that picks on you and says things and attacks you. Is somebody hearing me? So wisdom, wisdom. In fact, wisdom is such that you, you become very circumspect. And then you are discerning. Sometimes you sit and say, why is this action being carried by this person? That's discernment. Wisdom is enlightenment. What is enlightenment? Light falling on your eyes, making you to look brighter and see better. May you be wise. What is wisdom? Wisdom is experience. Uh, the other day I was watching uh, one of Oprah's old shows in which she was interviewing a 10 year old boy who is now in university. The boy is extremely brilliant. In fact, and it's not brilliant in literature, it's brilliant in astrophysics. And even then, any other thing he has read, ancient history, European history, whatever, and he's 10 years old. His parents can't cope, so every book they've bought, he's read all of it and remembers it. He ends up in uni, so she's asking him, how do you cope? Your classmates are 19, 20, you are 10. He says, well, I enjoy being there with them. Uh, and when questions come up, he answers with everybody, sometimes better than the 20-year-olds. But you see, he does not have the experience. You can accelerate knowledge, but you cannot accelerate wisdom. Wisdom is foresight to see before. Wisdom is prudence. Wisdom is reason. Wisdom is, I told you about Sophia, but wisdom is sophistication. Sophia is knowledge in Greek. The kind of wisdom we talk about in Hebrew is hokmah. So sophistication is when you take knowledge and apply it properly. Because wisdom is wise dumb. Wise dumb. Wise action. I like you to say wise action. So wisdom is wise action. Wise action wise action because wise action will make you endure things will make you go through things will make you handle things that others will wonder how did you handle that as wise action charles Haddon Spurgeon, pastor of the baptist church opposite elephant and castle tube station died a long time ago i think 120 years ago that's when he died died in 1903 he told the story of one day standing at the bus stop and uh, some woman just saw him and just started abusing him at the bus stop. Ba, 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 ba. After she talked for so long, he looked at her and said, yeah, it's going to rain, I can see. <laughs> so the woman thought he was deaf. She said, oh, I've been wasting my time abusing him. He's even deaf. Sometimes that's how to treat some people. So after they've done all they've done, you act so differently, they'll think, ah, what I even did didn't reach her. Because you are bigger. You are greater. You are more blessed. You are going further. Further than your accuser. Further than your attacker. Did you see what happened when Jesus stood up for that woman? The guys retreated. And Jesus said, where are your accusers? And she said, they are all gone. Praise the Lord. Wisdom. And what did Jesus do? Wise action. A wise speech. He said, he who has never committed sin, let him throw the first stone. He didn't, he didn't actually condemn them. He didn't, he, didn't, he didn't tackle the scripture they quoted. He just said, well, okay, you've quoted scripture. If you've never done anything wrong, throw the first stone. And you know every preacher I've read into that passage, including reading the fact that Whatever Jesus was writing on the ground could include their name and the things they've done. We don't know. Maybe when we get to heaven, we would know. Praise God. But they all retreated. Did you know that there are some things you have reacted to five years ago today you regret? And you have said, ah, if I had kept quiet, if I had not done anything, it would, it would have just fallen off me and everybody will have seen that person in their foolishness. May you be wise. And may this wisdom bring you abundance, prosperity, increase, promotion, 
progress in the name of Jesus shout amen powerfully such a person will be shrewd with their action and speech you can memorize knowledge however wisdom must think through things before it shows itself wisdom is the something that enables us to use knowledge rightly wisdom resists group pressure it thinks for itself its use of its own and it thinks and it, it and it, it uses its own judgment and say okay this is the best way to handle this praise the lord because some things if you react too early you might just find you have reacted too early you have reacted too early when you are endowed with wisdom from above you are able to see through things with god's eye you read situations with the eye of purity in fact wisdom will make you to forgive people not take not take evil not allow people to misuse you but at the same time wisdom makes you bigger greater mightier stronger wisdom makes you to be able to comfort people strengthen people encourage people oh may god use you may god bless you in the name of jesus wisdom will make you to see a person who will have been emotionally shattered and fall apart you package them back you strengthen them you encourage them you give them grace and strength to go on because you are wise may you be wise i said may you be wise david knew that he is a warrior he has no time for negotiation you offend him he's ready to attack only once in a while did he apply wisdom but he knows there's some cases that he can't manage them he passed it to his son. He says, Solomon, you are wiser. Deal wisely with those people. My own weapon is sword and, and my, my bow and arrow. I'll shoot down anyone. He said, but you, your weapon is wisdom. Deal how? Wisely with them. He handed them over to Solomon. And truly, Solomon called them one by one. You did this to my dad. This is the rule. Mr. Shime, you saw my dad one day, you abused him, you called him names. Okay, this is my judgment. You must not leave town for the rest of your life. You must not travel out of town. You are under town arrest. Not house, <laughs> town arrest. The guy forgot. The guy thought it was easy. That's wisdom. Oh, may you be wise. And may this wisdom bring you pro, pro, productivity, prosperity, promotion, and progress. Wisdom helps you to walk away from yesterday's ideas and embrace what God has for today. Yesterday, it helps you to walk away from yesterday people, yesterday ideas, yesterday actions. It helps you to move into embracing the destiny and purpose God has for you. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. Because you see, until you are dissatisfied with yesterday, you will not embrace tomorrow. That's why you see some people, they prefer yesterday. And every time you are taking actions that disrupts the way things are done, they question it, they can't handle it. Why are you disrupting the way things are done? Because tomorrow, for tomorrow to be great, you must disrupt today. I hope you got that. For tomorrow to be great, KICC must disrupt today. For tomorrow to be blessed, your business must disrupt today. Praise God. Even God disrupts you. For tomorrow to be great, when the boy is 12, as he's entering 13, God disrupts his body. Hair begins to grow. He, even him is shocked. He doesn't know what's happening. His voice breaks. It changes from a boy, boy voice to man voice. His mom just sees that he wakes up one day. He wants to talk. He's talking like a man. Disruption. Even God disrupts. Praise God. I say praise the Lord. So the wisdom... This wisdom is that which makes you dissatisfied with current situation. It is your way of pursuing a world without end, without limitation. 
When God gives you wisdom from above, you know what? You will always be relevant. Always blessed. Moving in grace. Blessing your generation. Being relevant. Making impact. Touching lives. Age will not be your measurement. Because there are people who are 90 and foolish. And there are people who are 90 and wow. We want to hear them. There is something to them. They are fresh and current. May God make you that way. I said, may God make you that way. And there are people who are in their 20 and they are already aged. Because they are not open to fresh thinking, fresh idea, God teaching them, steps being reordered, things being done. They don't learn anything. They don't learn anything anywhere. And life must be so that you are always learning. If you are flying... If you reach an airport, what you see must teach you something. You go to a country, you've never been there, you look at the way things are done, you may just find that you've never thought of things done this way. All right, okay, this is another way of doing it. You must change things. Think, change things, praise God. Oh, glory to God. Wisdom must make you question even your best. Wisdom must make you question your best. The wisdom demonstrated, the wisdom demonstrated, not the aptitude is what determines your climb. The wisdom you show is not the knowledge you have. It is the wisdom you show that determines your rise. So a 12-year-old man, a 12-year-old boy went to the temple and engaged professors of Hebrew law. Look when he started listening. At the age of 12. He was listening to each rabbi. The senior ones. This is the convention of conventions. Shiloh. This is the gathering of champions. They all gathered. And a 12 year old boy. Is listening to all the wisest men. When he now grows to 30 and is speaking. They say. Ah, how come is this wise? Who was he listening to? Wise people. Many of us, 12, 13, all you put in your son's hand is uh, is a play, PlayStation. Yeah, so he play all his life. Of course, some of those things do develop uh, cerebral thinking, but play morning, noon, and night does not develop cerebral thinking. It, de it, de it, it develops foolish thinking. All his years, I mean, when Jesus got there, three days. Because who you hear determines who hears you. Who you see determines who sees you. For three days he was listening to hey, the most advanced rabbis in the land of Israel. The most advanced. So much that his parents were looking for him. They thought he's going to use his catapults to kill birds with other boys out there. You know, many of you don't know how church runs. In the days of Water Den Road, the, day, the moment church starts, some teenagers have escaped. Their parents thought they went to TNT. They added another T in front of the TNT. They just escaped. Some of those boys never ended well. The ones who learned how to sit down and read and hear the word. Because also parents many times do not know how their actions affect the destiny of their children. Forgive my illustration. One time we had a lady, single parent. You had a disagreement with another woman. And you came to church, you want to come to fight her. And I said, not here. Even though you're a worker, I expected more of you. You raise your voice at this woman, I will make you sit down in suspension. She walked out in anger with her three children. I don't know where she went to worship. Two of the children ended in jail. Because if you cannot accept correction, how can your children accept correction? And what was the correction? Madam, you are a worker. You've been with this church. Now somebody offends you. What is, what is even the offense? I can't even remember. Maybe they owe one another 100 pounds. I have not paid on that. And you brought your children with sticks. You want to hit her. In the church premises, I said, are you for real? Manage your anger, madam, or God will manage it for you. And you, you went in offense. Every time people walk out 
of God in offense. Eish. Eish. I've never seen them really do well. But the unfortunate thing is that the children they have don't have a choice. Their destiny too is affected. Someone say wise action. Say it one more time, wise action. You have a place where they can't even correct you. Don't stay there. I can never forget my pastor. His corrections are very strong and harsh. And yet he was my pastor until he died two years ago. I bought his cars every four years. Bought him a house. Even though I have a ministry bigger than him, he was always my pastor. Because wise action meant that uh, there are things I may not have that he has. My mother used to say, a young person may have new clothes, but he doesn't have old ones like old people. Because old people have gone through so many clothes. You just started. Old people have gone through so many. Wisdom, may it be your portion. And by the wisdom of God, may you rise to new levels, new dimensions. And by the wisdom of God, may you prosper. May you exceed. Exceed your generation. Reach the places they thought you never reach. Be the person they said you never be. By the wisdom of God, may treasure houses open up to you. Treasures of greatness. Treasures of favor. Treasures of blessing. In the name of Jesus. Colossians 2, 3 says, In whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. May all the treasures that are inside wisdom manifest in your life. All the treasures that wisdom brings, may they manifest in your family. Your sons, your daughters will exceed well. They will excel. They will achieve. They will become the best they should be. They will become a testimony. The hand of the Lord will be on your life. The grace of Jesus Christ will awesomely increase for you. Everything you've lost through some foolish actions, we bring it under the blood of Jesus. We receive the grace of God today. We receive the wisdom of God today. We pray the mind of God upon your life. Upon your life. Philippians 2 verse 5 says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Then we now see Jesus' wise actions. He took seven humble steps. The Bible says that he took seven humble steps from verse 6. He humbled himself. He made himself of no reputation. He became like a man. He took on the form of a servant. He had no reputation. He took the form of a born servant. He came in the likeness of men. But then God exalted him in seven ways also. And then God had highly exalted him and given him a name that is above all names. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. May God lift you up. I say again, may God lift you up. Anyone who have offended you, who have hurt you from today, the grace to release them from your spirit so they don't becloud your destiny. Receive such a grace. Anyone who have hurt your person, your spirit, your destiny, your life, the grace to let them go receive. May you grow in grace. May you grow in favor. In Jesus' name. If you were blessed, give God praise. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to take this time to worship the Lord with our seed, our tithe, our offerings, our gifting. Again, this is wisdom. Wisdom is acting on the word of God. Somebody say the word. Say it again, the word. You don't act on whims and caprices. You don't act on emotion. Wisdom is to know that, look, the wisest thing I can do is to obey the word of God. The word says to give, it shall be given to you. Good measures. Pressed down, shaken together. With what measure you bring, God returns back to you. Somebody say amen. So this morning, we want to serve the Lord in our tithe. We want to serve the Lord in our offerings. We want to serve the Lord in that which he has blessed us with. We want to serve the Lord with that which he has put in our lives. We want to serve him with all of our heart. And we're ready to receive all that God has. May you prosper. Let's give with excitement this morning. Let's give to the Lord. 